Hello once again everyone, Brett back out to do scale modeling with a new special sprue review. This box, and if you looked at the thumbnail you already know what it is, but this box just arrived today from Volks USA. Those of you familiar with the hobby know what company Volks USA is the parent of. Or the other companies, the parents of Volks USA. I'm not sure how that works. So I thought I would just do a complete opening, unboxing of the box. Paper, invoice. You don't need to see and wrapped up in glorious amounts of bubble wrap or two because I've got two schemes in mind eventually Wrap, tissue paper, there it is, one of my all time favorite aircraft, F4E, can't wait for all the versions to come out. This was announced at IPMS last year in New Orleans and I was there and I got my pictures with, I got some autograph boxes too. From Mr. Zuki Mora himself. Not his real name. There you go. So, let's switch cameras. Let's see what All we got. Right. We got that beautiful Zuki Mora box art. The Super Wing series. This was just dropped off literally 10 minutes ago by the post office. And. Officially licensed Boeing product, which is always good to know. Whole bunch of stuff written in Japanese. Apparently, this is Betty Lou. Uh, whole bunch more stuff written in Japanese. Now, these aren't their super detailed kits like. The Sky Raider, where you've got pistons to put in, but it's like their other Phantoms, they're beautiful. One clear screw, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve or thirteen instructions. And this one right here. Last, let's start with fuselage. They do not use staples or self sealing bags. And since this is mine and I'm going to build it, I don't have to worry about zoom in a touch and there we go. Beautiful long nose phantom. Rivet detail. Raised detail. No flash, of course, because it's brand new. Beautiful rivet detail. Even underneath on the heat shield. Tail. Tops of the tail. We'll do it separately because there's two different ones because they are going to have multiple versions of this, they say. There's the intakes. Looking good. Some 
nice detail right here. Panel lines go all the way around. There's no bleed off like in some older kits. Be careful of the antenna or the static discharge. I'm not sure which it is right there. But out of the box, wow. And we've got underneath, and we've got wings. All right. Again, the other side of the fuselage, lower wings look great. There's a bunch of holes here you're going to need to drill out. Probably the instructions will tell you where. Tops of the wings. Looks like we've got ailerons. Separate ailerons. One piece horizontal stabilizers. Your ailerons, leading edge slats. I guess these are all just leading edge slats, not ailerons. Yep, the other one's going to be on the other one. Beautiful texture. Really nice detail. So you got the hump in the wing as you need it. Right here. There's a good look at your slats. And then another good look at all that fine recess and river detail. And your Sparrow missile launching rails. Not the actual rails themselves, but where they launch from. Where the rails will sit. They're recesses. Alright, here we have us. A couple more elevators for another version. Wheel hubs. There's your launch rails. This looks like the spine on the top. And some pylons. Some more launch rails. Various bits. It's nice that these are separate. I know you can buy Zuki Marcel's weight on wheels and metal landing gear, which I have not bought yet. But look at that detail right there. And they're molded in one piece. So there'll be no seam line around those edges. They're beautifully detailed launch rails. A couple of nice pylons. And your center spine. If you decide you want to go a little crazy and detail up the part under the center. There's your ejector pins, not raised at all. Here they were, this whole thing right here is where it would sit. Pylons are also molded in one piece, nice touch. There's the backs of your launch rails. Very nice Zukimura plastic. Looks like here we've got some nicely detailed engines. And landing gear areas, landing gear doors, landing gear bays, sorry, and your landing gear, and your afterburner ring, and your first stage compressors, struts, and these might be nose cones to some missiles maybe. Um, do not see that there's weight on these wheels. They are one-piece wheels. There's your nose wheel. Very delicate parts. So, there, one of your engines. There, your main landing gear bay, or main landing gear. Boy, I got bay on the brain. I do not see... 
spur line, maybe a slight one, those round parts. There's your engine detail. And there, landing gear bay detail. Your wheels are molded in halves, so halves and halves. Same parts on this side, so these are like matching across this way. This is your front landing gear strut. These are your main landing gear struts. Again, maybe a little burring. I don't know if you can see it. And there's your engine and your intakes. And then your intakes. There are three ejector pin marks per side. These are recessed. These are raised. If you can catch that in the light. Barely noticeable those recessed ones, but there are three in there. The raised ones on this side are a little more noticeable. Right there, right there. But a couple swipes with your favorite sander should get those right out. Yep, pretty much gone. So, nice engine detail. If you can have a trolley, you can leave them out. Here, we're getting into sidewalls for cockpits, bulkheads, projector seats. And I'm sure many, many aftermarket companies will be coming up with parts substitute if you're so inclined but lots of detail on the sidewalls the rear bulkhead back to the ejector seats the top where the canopy goes sides of the ejector seats both sides nice texture on the backrests nice really nice detail on these grab handles rudder pedals let's start right here Trying to adjust the light a little better. Oops, turning it off won't help. There we go. There's the top where the canopy's going to go. The other sides. In between the two cockpit areas. That's what I'm talking about, about those grab handles. Wonderful detail in there. And the cushions, nice textured, and a whole nice wash and nice color. All right, more cockpit details, more fuselage details, a nose cone. bunch of tiny details. There's the gun barrel right there. The nose cone right there. Looks like gear doors. Maybe some flaps. Let's start. Some of these side panels. Bulkhead. Some new landing gear doors. This right here is the gun barrel. The venting for the gun. Spring gear doors. These I think are flaps. Here and here. Here's your nose. And inside. There are no ejector pin marks on the gear doors, any of them. So let's take a look. Just some nice detail. Nicely placed attachment points. All right, what are we gonna look at next? This 
instrument panels. Like I said, I'm sure there's several companies that will come out with photo etched and 3D printed instrument panels. But you got your side panels, side panels, your front instrument panel, your rear instrument panel, your combing over the front. You can drill out the back, put some wiring in if you choose to. There you go. Probably decals for those. That is really nice. There's your side panels. You know, you paint those, you dry brush them, and you're gonna, without all that extras, you're gonna get nice, nice detail. Okay, I think we're getting some double screws here. Weapons and ladders, two sprues, so we will open one. This is screw N that there are two of. You've got your fins for your sparrows and your sidewinders. Nose cones for both, and your ladders. Really nice looking. I mean, just, these aren't flat, like most fins you see on model rockets. These are actually angled, beveled, that's the word I was looking for, like you'd expect them to be. So, the bodies of the sparrows are one piece, same with the sidewinders. And the end, you can see right there, a little bit of slide molding action going on. There's the ladder looking good with no burring, no flash. I mean, you can see the beveling on the fins. Right there you can. See the fins are beveled. Both sides, of course. So, good attention to detail for the weapons. You like said two of those. And we got. Two more with drop tanks on them, and we get more drop tanks. So these have the same weapons. No, they don't. There's different, different more versions of the weapons. So we will open one. I'm not a sparrow and sidewinder expert, but I do know the difference when I see them. Again, beveled edges. Nice detail in the fins. Fuel tanks got raised and recessed. There's the different ones, again, slide molded. And one of your fuel tanks. Like I said, this is two of these matching screws. Looking good. Did you like me some Zuki more Phantoms? Their last ones were amazing. You got one of these which has your tail hook, another nose gear, and looks like one of the part of one of the bays. Alright. Your tail hook. He said nose and the second nose gear. F4 E sprue B. This looks like one of the ladders that would come out of the side, maybe. Tail looks really nice. One piece, good detail. So, raised recess detail in the fuel tank. Here's your really nice detail in the tail hook, especially back here. Main control areas. It's raised rivets. No. Maybe slight burring on the nose wheel. And then phrase detail throughout on this. One of these, right? Yep, one of these. Two regular screws left. This one is flaps. And a couple other parts. Mainly flaps. Screw E. Alrighty. And 
last one is pylons, tiers, mirrors, looks like targeting pods, and brackets hold them in place, and a couple more launch rails. These pylons are halves, so are the, the targeting pods. But the mirrors, tiers, let's see, one, two, three, these are all tiers, triple ejector racks. And then these tiny, tiny little mounting brackets that you're going to put on there to hold your missiles. There are no bombs with this kit. And these are nicely, nicely detailed. These ejector racks. And then your four more launch rails. These are in halves, these pylons, as are the targeting pods. But again, the detail on those clamps, mounting clamps, is exquisite. Clear parts. We've got options for canopy open, canopy closed. Super clear and pretty thin. Any lights over there? No center seam. Absolutely no center seam. Here's my NASCAR decal thing. No distortion. No magnification, no center seam, inside or out. And, I mean, obviously, I don't know if to be call them scale thickness, but some of the thinnest plastic I've seen in a while. Nice. All right. Here we have bag of decals and instructions. Oops. So, I added some extra little warning labels. Must have left them off the big sheet. So, this is all your stencil data. And, Betty Lou Shark Mouth. These are made by, printed by Cartograph, so they should be good. Designed by House of Phantoms. Again, should be good. Look at all them stencils. Walkways. Instrument panels. Weapon stencils. I up here to see Betty Lou's mouth. So it looks like you get one version in this kit. However, I'm sure there's going to be, and may already be, many, many aftermarket decals because there have been other F4Es available. It's not this quality. So, an advertisement for the other F4s they make. I believe I have them all. F4E is the newest one. And you've got some of their other kits. And then a whole catalog of everything. I do not have everything. I do not have... Huh, I don't have the Mustangs. I've got this one. I've got this one in 48, not 32nd. This one I got, did a review on it. I got one of the Sky Raiders, not both. So there you go, gonna buy some more Zuki Mora kits. And here, your stencil layout. And that's just around the engines. And that's just around underneath the nose. Elevators. Uh, tops of wings, or bottom of wings. 
One side, other side, pylons, top, tops of wings, tops of elevators. Yep, many, many stencils. And you get a beautiful color call out and decal placement guide. Which you could probably just make a photocopy of it and cut that out. I mean, I like how they got this intake vein is beige and this one's green. So, there's your Southeast Asia colors. And top and bottom. Bottom gray. Some metal work going on there. They do a nice job of showing you the metal work on there. And then all the decals and the missile decals. And the pylon decals. And your color callouts are for... I don't speak Japanese, but I do see green and olive drab. FSN numbers. I don't see a particular manufacturer. Just FSN numbers. I mean, that could be a manufacturer. Let me show you. There you go. Anyway, you're done. Really the wall. All right. Instructions. Zoom out to touch. Get a little drink of water. Here we go. A little bit about the aircraft. 20 millimeter Vulcan cannon. Aim seven under the fuselage. Aim nine under wings. A whole bunch about the Phantom. I don't know how well you can read it, but if you want to give it a shot, pause it and give it a shot. This is talking about the early one, which this is the F4E early. Again, you can pause it, take a read. Try out different positions, open canopy, lowered leading edge, closed air brakes, open air brakes, flaps, ailerons, closed exhaust, lowered array stabilizers, front strut extended, or that's why there's two front struts, one's extended, one's not. Tools and paint, it is Mr. Color Paint, there you go. Mr. Color Paint, and the FS numbers. And your tools, and your notes, and your warnings, and you're going to start with seats and cockpits. And you're going to paint the little things around the pull handles. Cockpit. And these are your basic general instructions. They're nothing too fancy. You got gray areas. They're kind of busy, but they're easily readable. Parts numbers are easily, and the sprues have big part, big um, sprue numbers on them. And it's telling you where to paint as you go along. As you can see by these little bottles here, dropper bottles. You got decals. If you're going to use decals for your cockpits, telling you where to go. There's your dropper bottles again. So 12 would be. Twelve is dark sea gray. What I would do. I copy this and just tape it over my workbench so I don't have to keep turning back until I get to know what they are. Finished cockpit. Parts configuration after assembly. Putting cockpit in half the fuselage. Important, check this first. Before gluing, be sure to check that you can assemble the left and right outer cockpit panels without any gaps. Cement in place only after test fading is shown in the image. Hey. Good thinking. All right, then you get enough fuselage halves together. And then you put the center spine on. You've got to drill an eight millimeter, 0.8 millimeter holes along here. Actually, it's like just one. Okay. Nose cone, cannon, cannon cover. Left side, bottom side, right side, top view. Giving you lots of views to make sure you get everything right. 
using part A9 for this particular tail version. There's your engines. It's gonna look good. There is an engine trolley with it. I guess I didn't notice that. There you go, you can keep an engine out. Oh, it's by cutting off part of I sprue. Which sprue is I sprue? I sprue is the one with the engines on it. There you go. Here. Let's see how we're looking at. But here, here, here. Here, here, here. They put a trolley on the sprue. How clever is that? And no, they're not the first ones to do something like that, but they still find it thoughtful. Okay. Drilling out holes. Pay attention. 1.5 millimeter holes. Many, many places. Go through the pen and highlight certain things like that. Your intakes together. Make sure the parts are, parts are fully assembled when gluing together. Here's the other views, top view, left side view. You paint the inner side number two, which is more than likely white. Put your engines in. This is the angle they should sit at. Your rear view. Then your landing gear doors, your main gear doors. Again, painting the insides white. Glossy white, according to that. Other side, same thing. Main gear, nose gear door actuator. Supposed to cut off part. Put it all in there. That's what it looks like when you're done. You've got these little bubbles that are telling you things. This F4 replicates all aspects of the real aircraft as accurately as possible, including the bulk of the nose and area around the intake. The nose appearance can change depending on the angle, positioning, and other factors. So read all those. It'll help you along and you'll learn stuff. There, I like. This is what the view should look like. And yeah, they're flat. They're straight. Alright, and you're still working on the actual intakes themselves. Attach one and two in order. Slap them on the sides. Slap it a base. Look, he knows this before, but names of the parts of the real aircraft. Air intake, intake vane, bell mouth pitot tube, position light. Pretty cool. So rings around the back of the engine. Again, views telling you what to do. Name of the parts of the real aircraft. Tailpipe seals. You're going to learn while you build. Look how busy this looks. Open, closed. You choose which exhaust nozzle you want. Flaps and ailerons. Raised position or lowered position. Again, decide in advance. Because there's different, you have to cut off things for the different versions you want to do. And then there, again, the rear view of it in the raised position. Pretty highly detailed instruction book. There, the outer wing and leading edge flaps. You have an option, like I said before. Use the same type on both sides, though, it says. And, there you go. Front view, dehydro, dehedral angle 12 degrees, in case you want to get out and measure it. Oh, yeah, there are two sets of elevators at the tips of the wings. Duh. Duh. Sorry about that. Okay. So, there you go. That's why there's four of those. Because I forgot the wings tipped up. Put the tail hook together and in. Cooling duct vex on either side of the strengthening tip of the hook where the engine exhaust gas hits. Didn't know that. All right, all right, all right. We're not, we just now got halfway through the book. Your stabilators is what they're called. You can choose which position to have them in. Mounting ports, downward facing, upward facing. So make sure you're choosing how you want them facing. 
There you go. And your nose landing gear. Option. Raised, extended, or retracted. I'd probably do it retracted just because I'm going to have it fully loaded out. And you don't have to put this on until after the whole thing's together. Landing gear can wait until you get it all painted up. Nose landing gear front door. Uh, nose landing gear door. I see. Trying to see. Huh. I mean, you could put it closed with the gear up. I've seen if it showed how to do that, though. Doesn't look like it does. It's the main landing gear. Again, main landing gear. Putting it in the wings. Of course, after you have it all painted. There's how it should sit. Do not put the plane on the ground, but let the cement dry completely for one night and then ground it. They are thinking of everything. Okay. There you go. They do have a opened or closed. So if you want to close it, you do this. Or that could just be the air brakes. And there's putting in your ejector seats, your gun sight. Console cover, can it be open or can it be closed? Again, do you decide? So, there's closed, obviously. Center drop tank, because these things suck fuel. You have to drill two more holes right there. Make the hole deeper for attaching the center drop tank. Only open these holes if you choose to attach the center drop tank. And your wing tanks and your outer and inner pylons. Extended inclined pylon and mirror. So they are mirrors, not tiers. And your sparrows going on. And then the pylons and launchers under the inner wings. Your triple ejector racks. So they were mirrors and tiers. Make sure the left and right pylons are the same type and match. Good thinking. With launchers. There you go. I'm just going to show you how to do all that. There's your sidewinders going on. They're pylons. Your ladders, if you choose to do it open with ladders, you have two. And your sprue callouts, and for use in Japan only, if something's missing or broken, you send them the, which it is and how much it costs, and you give them the money, and they'll send you a new part. And there you go. Wow. Wow. All I can say is, wow. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I know some of you have too. Hope to see some builds of it soon. I'll probably start it once I get these four things cleared off the bench because I do want to build mine soon too. So, thanks for watching this lengthy inbox review, sprue review of this beautiful new Zukimura kit. It makes me proud to own two. Thanks for watching. Sit your ass in the chair. Buy yourself a kit. It is, I believe, $75 at Screw Brothers. Give me a second. Let me check. Let me look. Let me roll up onto the sidewalk and take a look here. Where is Spur Brothers? Nope, that ain't it. That's Spectrum. Okay. Zukimura F4 Phantom 2 early from Spur Brothers Direct is $75 plus shipping. There you have it. Not a bad price for such a nice kit. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay safe.